Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We finally got a server. Starlighter Season 8, Day 19 coverage resumes. Game 2 of 4 today. Rock's Kiss now facing off against Flipside. They're tagged up as nobody here. Cyborg Matt said, guys, get this show on the road ASAP. Who knows how long this will be stable. So we just went with it. Flipside, well, they're Flipside, just not tagged up appropriate, appropriately here. Regardless, we finally got a game. Cinderin, I hope you're still with me, man. Oh, there you are. How are you, pal? I'm good. Uh, I had a little bit of a break, of course, like you said, because of uh, these technical issues. Dota 2 has been a little bit unstable today and yesterday, and actually, oh, two days ago it was good. I'm not sure what exactly is uh, being done right now that's causing Christmas. all these hiccups, but... <laughs> Christmas is being done right now, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah. You're right, flip side against yep. Rock's Kiss. Rock's Kiss, definitely the favorites going into this. And the last two games we've cast a flip side. One game they got Huskar, and the other game they got Meepo. So these guys are experimenting and trying some unorthodox stuff just because they their life in the tournament is kind of... Let's put it this way, they have no chance of getting top four. So, <laughs> Let's just be bold with this one. They've got yeah. absolutely no chance. So they, they can have do no whatever chance, they want. So. <laughs> so they try something different. However, Rock's Kiss are actually in a pretty good position. I believe they are 7-2 and two right now, which is putting them at... That is a potential first place if they manage to win, uh, obviously, the rest of their games, which is a tall order, but maybe they can win against some of the other top teams and then get a good top four placement. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're definitely looking uh, pretty good lately, and I have to say, obviously, the big favorites coming into this one, and I love that they first picked Pugna. I think this hero is underrated. Um, ah. In the new version, people started picking it pretty highly, and then it kind of faded away again, and now it's, it's a little so-so. I think this hero is a first pick. That's just my opinion on it. Pugna is incredible. All right, we got a Pugna fan in the house. He was first picked here by Rock's Kiss. I don't know when we got into this draft, but uh, Crystal Maiden Lich going to be snagged by Flipside. So they get their two supports locked down. And uh, just look at those bans from Rock's Kiss. They first ban out the Huskar, and then right away ban out that Slark. So they've had their ear to the drum. They know that Flipside have been experimenting a bit, and, well, they don't want to get caught on the back end of a successful uh, uh, experiment for Flipside. So they're going to ban out those wild card heroes. And uh, looks seconds. like they are gearing up for a pretty heavy push strat. Pugna and Nature's Prophet, not a bad way to start off a heavy pushing lineup. Definitely not. And I'm a little surprised to see that they are picking Crystal Maiden and Lich against Pugna. Because uh, this is... <laughs> the thing I love about Pugna, and the reason why I think it's a first pick, is it gives so much utility. Brilliant. It's a pretty strong laner in one-on-one. -on -one. It doesn't lose to that much, to be honest. It has high damage, a good burst, and long range. Mm -hmm. uh, it pushes towers really well, it team fights really well, and it counters absolutely everything that has high mana cost spells. It's very hard to fight around the Nether Ward. If you place it well, this hero is perhaps perhaps the best pushing hero in the game because of that Nether Ward. Not so much because of the Nether Blast, which is obviously great, but the way the Nether Ward enables you to push is what's really crazy. Because if the enemy tries to fight into you and can't get the ward down, just, just thinking about how fights Five generally work in the game, minutes. the heroes cast spells at each other and then they deal damage. But when you cast spells and you take the damage yourself as well, time. it's like, ev <laughs> how can I explain? It's like everyone on the enemy team has a double damage rune and is hitting you while you're casting, you know? Because <laughs> they're hitting you twice as hard because you're hitting yourself. Yeah, yeah. So unless you have those BKBs or heroes that are just innately good at playing against Pugna because they have low mana costs and mm -hmm. don't really care about it, you can be in a lot of trouble, and I still think this hero is underrated. I'm sure there's other casters yeah. that agree with me. I don't remember if it was uh, LD who thinks it's undervalued right now. This hero, to me, is I think really, it was really LD. good. I, I can imagine. Oh, I love seeing it. I can hear LD and Vikramond arguing about who's better, Bristleback or Pugna, and I know Vikramond loves Bristle God, so it must be LD that likes the Pugna. That's my <laughs> bit of deductive logic. <laughs> backwards but I, I think you're right about that and the other thing about the nether ward that's pretty powerful is the speed at which it does the damage because it'll actually yeah. damage you before you ca the spell goes off so if you're at that like one hit from death and you try to go in for that one last lucent beam the nether ward will kill you before you get to beam the opponent in many a case um so yeah. that's one thing that makes it sort of extra potent that you can't do those uh kitschy little plays when you're really close to death 
And also when you're playing against heroes that have uh, channeling abilities that cost like mana per second, it mm -hmm. keeps channel channeling against you as well. So it's uh, not just the initial mana cost, it's all mana cost that runs that it counters. Now I like this pick from uh, from Flipside because Weaver is one of the heroes that innately is pretty good at dealing with Pugna. Low mana costs, good mobility so it doesn't get hit by the spells, and a hero who can perhaps sneak in and get rid of that nether ward in the fights. Mm -hmm. But what I have to say right now for Radical, uh, yeah, they're called Rock's Kiss, but it is Radical Online Extremists. By the way, love that uh, team name. I think it's really cool. Um, they have amazing push. And to me, this, this strategy from them is really straightforward. And they're giving all the info that uh, Flipside needs to try to counterpick them. The question is if they've got what they need against this, because they don't really have wave clearing. And that's what you want to have against a lineup with Pugna, Prophet, and Veno. You need something to kill the creeps so they can't push your tower. And now Treant is going to come off. Uh, if I remember correctly, this O underscore O lol is godlike, so no big surprise we're going to see a Treant Protector coming out from Rock's Kiss. Yeah. Number one Treant lover in the world. <laughs> and I, I really have to say, just right now, in my opinion, regardless of what Flipside picks, I think they're going to have a really hard game against yeah. this Rock's lineup. And I really agree with you. Luna is okay with that creep clearing because of the Moon Glaive, it, uh, or the, yeah, the, the Moon Glaive. Um, it helps, but still, Luna's a hero that needs some room. She needs to take off, and Weaver as well, although he's good against Venno, good against Pugna in an isolated scenario, not one that's going to do well in terms of anti-push. He may be able to survive, but I fear that this Luna and Weaver aren't going to get enough time to really come online by the time uh, Rock's Kiss are knocking on their Tier 3 towers. I love this final ban for OD. I was going to suggest uh, that maybe Rock's Kiss would want to pick him up as their fifth pick. He works so well with these pushing lineups because of that Essence Aura. It gives you so much sustainability. Your team can just keep grabbing that mana. You can keep healing up with the mech, with the, the living armor, what have you. And uh, I think he would have fit in nicely here. But alas, a smart ban from Flipside. And uh, Nyx Assassin going to be the final ban from Rock's Kiss, which also makes some sense here. Nyx, very, very powerful when dealing with that Rat Dota style of Nature's Prophet. And also a nice pick against Pugna. Uh, Pugna is a fragile hero. That's the biggest weakness of the hero, is that it innately has terrible health and very bad strength gain. So you need to compensate for that with items. And the way Pugna scales, he gets a lot of mana, or sorry, a lot of intelligence per level. So the mana burn from Nyx Assassin gets really scary for Pugna in all stages of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, so not only Prophet is countered by it, it's a very good hero to have against Pugna, but obviously not anymore. And, well... I don't know what uh, what Rock's Kiss's last pick is. Uh, Flipside would maybe be easier to predict because they have some more of a stable lineup, but I really have my eyes on Rocks right now because what do they really need to break this base? They kind of already have all the heroes that are going to do the pushing, but who's going in front is going to be my question. They have fragile heroes, sure, they do have Trayon armor, but nobody really to lead the charge. Yeah, well, that, that's very true. Tree could sort of lead the pack a little bit, but yeah, you're definitely right. Maybe a Dragon Knight would work well here as a nice tanky force that works well with the pushing. Compliments of Elder Dragon form. Wouldn't be too bad. Dragon Knight is... Uh, sorry? What? <laughs> I got a little bit oh, carried away Oh, he's banned out. Oh, yeah, right. okay. He's yeah. Fourth okay, that's why right. I was confused. I yeah. thought I heard Dragon Knight. I was like, this I did say Dragon Knight. That was just a <laughs> okay. tunnel vision fail. Yeah, my All bad. right, so I did hear Dragon Knight. You heard right. <laughs> I, you heard right. right. I was just... Uh, I had a dose of stupidity that came out onto the onto the field there. My bad. Um, I don't know. You know, honestly, as much as uh, everyone's going to giggle, a Dazzle wouldn't be the Dazzle worst thing here for Rock's Kiss. Sure, it wouldn't help their tankability issue, but he's got that great sustain for pushing. And uh, that minus armor could be a little bit scary, alas. It will be a queen That's, of pain. It's funny, I actually thought about this before they picked the clockwork on the enemy team, and I was like, this is what Goblack usually picks with his Treant, because it's such a strong laner with the, with the living armor. But I'm not sure how well it fits into their lineup, mm -hmm. but they're going to go for it anyway. Um, I think they're just playing a kind of style here where they want to play really aggressively on lanes, and then if they win the lanes, they just flat out end the game in like 20 minutes. This kind of lineup, if it gets off to a good start, just rolls you. Yeah. That's how it is. Uh, like the Clockwork pick, it's Prepare going to give battle. Flipside an option of somehow engaging and getting the fight on their terms. He's a good hero to have against Pugna as well, not the worst mana costs in the game, pretty good health, and a hero who can kill Pugna on his own if he catches Pugna off guard, because... Well, Pugna's only defensive mechanism is Decrepify, which just makes the battery assault hurt even worse. So, mm -hmm. not really too big of a counter in that regard to that. So, yeah. Well, curious to see this. Very classic Rock's Kiss picks, actually. They they love running this kind of stuff. Yeah, 
And I'm sure Necro Books will be a reality in this match. That Nature's Prophet, Pugna, probably the Venno. Hell, even maybe the Treant will grab himself a Necro Book if form allows. This is uh, definitely going to be a Necro heavy game. But as you mentioned about that Clockwork final pick, how are they going to lane this? Not really a traditional mid hero for Flipside. And it looks like it will be Weaver in the mid. And they do have a stand in here. He is tagged up as A. And I'm going to glance at this Steam profile. <laughs> I have no clue who this is. Of course, it's Marcus Alliance. Private. Alliance. I, I don't recognize it. Wex or Axe.mo? Zoo? I, I don't I don't. Oh, it's Axe.mo. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, oh yeah, that guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I know we sure. have Backslash Man here again. Um, is this the same Backslash guy? I do not know. These When people are using these kind of nicknames, it's, it's kind of hard to I can't, I can't but... keep it straight. I think it is Backslash Man, though, and I'm, I'm going to stick to it. So, all right, let's look at these rosters here. On the right-hand side, we do have Flipside RU in the bottom. It looks like a 2-1-2 coming out. Sheasley going to be on the Crystal Maiden. He will be supporting in light, being uh, farming away on that safe lane. Luna in the mid. It is going to be their stand-in. A, uh, playing the Weaver. Again, don't know who that is exactly. Then up in the top, it will be Afterlife on the Clockwork and their other stand-in, Double Backslash. I call him Backslash Man. We were calling him Wolverine when it was three backslashes. Now, I don't know that Wolverine is going to be satisfactory, so we'll have to find something else creative. Broke here. a claw. Oh, bro <laughs> Uh, so on the dire side here, of course, we have Rock's Kiss. I think this ooh, ooh wall is uh, go black on the Treant, uh, one can assume. Yol going to be supporting on the Venomancer. A 2-1-2 going to be coming out from Rock's Kiss as well, as Scandal going to be and the solo mid Pugna. They will have uh, Nature's Prophet actually in the jungle, so sort of a 2-1-2 here. Sadoi going to be on the Nature's Prophet, and then up in uh, the solo safe lane, it is going to be Biz on the Queen of Pain. So a little bit of rotation here. Biz does tend to be their mid player sometimes, but Scandal going to be the mid player here. So... Uh, um, yeah, Queen of Pain in the solo safe lane. This is very intelligent laning from Rock's Kiss when they were expecting the lanes that... Uh... Oh, wow, let's wait a second. They're putting a lot of pressure onto this Luna. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I barely Leech caught the tail end of that. As well as Gale just slows so damn much that Luna got brought down from it. Did not expect that to come yeah. at all. I, neither did I. I was I, not ready for really it. really came out of nowhere. And the, I was about to point out that I love this lane from Rock's Kiss because it's a hard lane to go on. Uh, Treant is incredibly tanky, he has a lot of health and of course the living armor as well as leech seed and he has high base damage so if you can't challenge this lane that well your Luna is simply not going to get farm. He's going to outlast it the Luna really hard. He has 30 damage more than the Luna even started with a double damage. I'm not sure you saw that but he had like 180 damage on the Treant on level 1. Um, and then you couple it up with the Venomancer, so if they try to go on him, the Gale can bail him out, and if, if not, they can get these kind of openings that we saw right before, and Lich has already rotated, because they need help down here right away, and yep. Goblax is just off to an amazing start. Well, Venno going to grab himself a Haste Rune. He is going to be able to Gale the Crystal Maiden straight up. Sheasley actually going to be in some trouble here. There is support coming in from the Lich, but only so much a Lich can do. There's the Frost Nova, but this Hasted Venno, I think he can pursue this. The Living Armor going to come out. Sheasley still slow compliments of that Poison Sting. Uh, Haste Rune going to work so well. We were just arguing about this the other day. What is the moon? And this is a situation where that Haste is going to be pretty damn powerful. Going to secure a double kill as Sadoi comes in and actually last hits both of them. But a very convincing start for Rock's Kiss here. Small bit of luck going for y'all on that Venomancer, but a successful bit of kills nonetheless. And Prophet almost has a three minute Midas because of that double kill. That's kind of scary to think about. He's, ah, okay, never mind. Midas is more expensive now. So he's still 400 gold off it, but I would assume that's something he can rack up within the next minute or minute and a half. So we're still looking at a, at a sub five minute Midas on a jungler, which is ridiculous. All, really what you can hope for. That's the ideal scenario for you in, in a game like this. And, yeah. Yeah, all, the, all this uh, beginning, uh, all this beginning, all this action in the start has really been been favoring Rock's Kiss on all lanes. The Queen of Pain is winning against the Clockwork. Uh, the Pugna is winning mid against the Weaver, all by, albeit not by that much, but still winning it. Mm -hmm. And the bottom lane is where it's been at so far. And that's the most important lane to win. That's what I've, I've mentioned on previous casts as well. If you're running something like a tri lane versus a tri lane, which Rock's Kiss aren't even doing, they're kind of running a two versus two and a half ish. <laughs> If you're winning that lane, that's the high impact lane to win because it's where most heroes suffer at once. Yeah. And it's looking really good for them. You're right about that. And I, I just realized, compliments of Twitch chat, those are actually forward slashes, not backslashes. So backslash man is a total misnomer. He's, he's forward that's slash true. man. That, that's true. <laughs> I, I didn't again. even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I uh, Yeah, good call. You guys are very astute in Twitch chat. I mean, there are 12,000 of you, so I imagine there's a handful of folks that will be able to catch that kind of silly goof. But uh, tip my hat once again.
Here we are going to see Weaver uh, grab a double damage rune. Is going to go into the bottle and uh, may choose to get a bit aggressive here. Looks like he is going to engage onto Scandal. Shikuchi forward. Scandal going to be in big trouble here. The Living Armor does come out. Decrepify. That will slow down A. He does want to commit for it, though. He is going to hop forward. Actually does have enough mana for one last Shikuchi. Now Sadoi going to come in, but uh-oh, that Geminate attack going to take him low. Oh, a I think he should have committed for that. Yeah, me too. I thought he was going to go for it for sure. He's going to see the Courier, though. He's going to try and sniff it out here. Not sure if he's going to find it. Good control from Rock's Kiss. They'll put it on top of the tree so that he doesn't have vision. And uh, that cute courier will survive. Oh, that courier's got a fish in its mouth. Look at that. Oh, what a what a cutie. So, yeah, I think Weaver definitely could have had that kill, though. I'm not sure why he played that so passively. Sprout was on cooldown. Maybe afraid of the burst from Pugna from a Decrepify Nether Blast. That was on rotation. So, maybe that was the fear. I mean, he's only level 5, so no time lapse, I guess, makes him a little more hesitant. <laughs> All right, sorry about that if you were just uh, yep. throwing a pointer to me. I was, something came up just a very short moment. <laughs> no but, worries. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, no hopefully, worries. yeah, didn't miss any kills or anything, but yeah. the, the advantage already going heavily in, in Rock's Kiss's favor. They haven't taken a tower yet, uh, but they're already 2,000 gold ahead at three minutes, which is, uh, sorry, five minutes with three kills, which is a really big advantage at this point. And they don't even have a, I wouldn't say they have the jungler advantage, because when we talk about that, we generally see like a level 6 enigma at 5 minutes, but it's a level 4 profit, so it's, it's not really too much of an advantage in that regard. They're, they're just flat out winning the lanes now. CM is going to have to TP out of the bottom lane as she gets cornered by a Venom Ward and a Gale. Very nicely played by y'all here. Yeah, he's playing a great Venomancer to start things off now. Actually going to take a bit of harassment, but will be able to survive for now. Pretty standard Venno build here, 1-1-2 one, one, to start things off at level 4, of course 2 points in that Plague Ward. Now that it takes Poison Sting, that is the pretty common Venomancer build. A 6 minute rune will be an Illusion rune, and again it looks like Yol going to be able to scout it out. How do you say that guy's name, Cinder, and is, is it Yol, is that right? Because I, I have a tendency to say Yol, and I know it's probably not that. Is it Yol? I think that's safe. I like Yol, then it sounds like Come something on, straight out of a rap. <laughs> Hey, Rock's kiss, y'all. It's Rock's kiss. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. Y'all or y'all. Uh, yeah. We're going to have to ask him on that. I'm not, I'm not sure how you say that. And actually, this but... Midas on Sedoi is not as fast as I thought it was going to be. About a six and a half minutes. That's pretty oh, standard. Oh, wow. So, he got delayed a lot on that. I yeah, think. that's a little bit interesting. Still very timely. Don't get me wrong. But I thought it was going to, as you were talking about, some ridiculous timing, like four and a half minutes. But he's going to get it about on point, as uh, everyone else does in uh, sort of a free farm environment. No other Midas on the field. Uh, he'll probably be the lone carrier this game, and definitely don't think this is going to be a Midas game for the Luna. No, with this kind of start, oh, well, that once a, then again, if you can if you can turn it around and get a comeback off of a Midas, that can definitely work. But the question is, yeah. who's going to make the comeback for him? I think I think the Weaver has been doing very well so far and can definitely play his role when we get to the mid game. Clockwork also not looking too shabby. Level six and a half in seven minutes with 17 CS against a Queen of Pain who was easy laning. Mm -hmm. I think Afterlife has done a good job too. So Midas for Luna actually still an option if they do manage to get these fights. But you can just see already Rock's Kiss. They know what they want. Pugna's in the bottom lane with level 2 on the ward. I love that he skipped the, the ultimate at this point. I don't think life drain is worth it. Max up the ward, get it fast, and start pushing these towers before Flipside can start fighting you. And we do see Clockwork in a port down as well. He is level 6, as you mentioned, so he does have a hook shot ready. Looks like Flipside doing a set a little bit of a trap here. And there's the hook shot forward. Will connect onto an illusion. Oh no, we were just talking about that rune debate. And uh, Illusion will hold that thought here as Yol. Going to be in a little bit of trouble, perhaps. He's going to get some support. Compliments of the Triant. Triant only level 5, so no overgrowth. But in comes the Queen of Pain. That's going to be a Sonic Wave to finish off the Lich. Crystal Maiden going to take a bit of damage as well to secure her kill. And Sedoi will throw a Nature's Wrath that throws a lot of damage out onto Afterlife as well as in Light. Quaff going to hop forward, trying to catch uh, Aluna as she retreats. Instead, uh, going to have to turn for the Clockwork. Battery Assault going to be enough to finish off the Nature's Prophet. Venno did fall. But the tower goes down as well, so Rock's Kiss will come out the victors here. Now Weaver, looking like he wants to try and make something happen on the Queen of Pain. Only going to have mana for one Shikuchi, and that's going to be it. So they are going to try to pursue. Nether Blast going to be off the mark, and Weaver going to make it out. So it's going to make it 5-2 to two here at the 8.5 minute mark. One tower down, many more to go. A nice bait there from Scandal. Can't really blame the clock for trying that hook shot. That looked, that looked pretty real. <laughs> that's what illusions tend to yeah. do. Um, yeah, 
Uh, two for two fight still, Roxic is getting the better of it. I think they could have even got more, a little bit of a misplay towards the end from Queen of Pain, who might have been able to uh, to pick up an additional kill. But I think overall, Roxic Kiss are going to be pretty happy with this. They know they're gaining every minute. They got nice aggressive wards out as well. Notice especially the ward down here, watching at the tier 2 tower at the bottom lane. No one's actually going to be able to go out on this lane unnoticed unless they smoke. And that means they can prepare for a gank on the Luna, for example, right now. Obviously, they're not ready, but when they see her moving out like this, even before she reaches the creep wave, they have about 10 seconds to even start TPing heroes down there and take the ganks. Mm -hmm. Or just to keep them in check as they uh, rotate to uh, start maybe already putting some pressure on the mid lane now. Yeah, and uh, Pugna well on his way to a Necro book, it appears. He does have that first Staff of Wizardry. And I'm curious to see what build the Prophet goes for here. He did go for Phase Boots following that Hand of Midas first. He started with the Gloves of Haste, so he did go the absolute fastest Midas that you can grab. And I have to imagine he's going to want to go Necro Book next, but you never know. He could try something a little different as kind of a backup plan in case this all-out pushing strat fails and uh, grab something like a Shadow Blade so that he has a little bit of right click. But uh, I think the Necronomicon build is going to be a little bit more standard here. Queen of Pain looking like she wants to grab herself an early Orchid here with the double Robo Magi. Yeah, good pickup as well when you're playing against a Weaver. They need something to control the Weaver since they're... We haven't talked about this, but their lineup doesn't have a stun, so... Yeah. True. Weaver is a very good and mobile pick against these heroes. They have overgrowth, but in the overgrowth he can just time lapse and then he can kind of do what he wants in the fight. So I think Rock's Kiss are acknowledging the fact that Weaver is going to be their biggest problem. So Queen of Pain very intelligently item building for that. Mm -hmm. uh, once the Necrobook, like you say, is probably going to come out on Pugna as the next item. That's also going to be another thing they have against the Weaver. Of course, the Necro 3 True Sight will be Actually, useful. Actually, it's going to be a Fourth Staff, I think. He just picked up that Ring of Regen. Oh, yeah. So you might get the Fourth Staff first. Hmm. Not sure this is the better choice in this case, but yeah. since the Rock's Kiss lineup, to me, feels like an all-in push lineup, they don't really have the best late game. Of course, Prophet and Quap can become sort of carries, but they'll not out-carry a Luna and a Weaver in the late game. Yeah. Uh, but they could build it, uh, build around having mobility now and just try to take towers and then... Go for the Necrobook timing a little bit later on. A, oh, ho, ho, in some ho. trouble here. Doesn't want to time... Oh, he doesn't have it, actually. Yeah, Biz hesitating now... right there. We saw him wanting to cast the ultimate, and he didn't blow it. Would have been a kill. Now he's going to throw another scream. Uh-oh, there's the time lapse from the Weaver. Now he's in kind of an awkward position. Quamp going to have another scream. Now has enough for the ulti, but Weaver going to outcraft him as he does double back into the trees. Biz not going to be able to lock down that snaky scarab, and Weaver will port back to safety. A close call, though. If Biz hadn't hesitated, might have had enough to finish him off with that sonic wave a bit earlier there. Yeah, he, had, he might have had a chance, but it's, it's always hard when you don't have true sight against a Weaver. Yeah, <laughs> don't blame uh, him you, for that one. He moves so fast that you don't really know... You don't really know what you're dealing with, and you don't want to scream the ground, so you lose all your mana. <laughs> Obviously now with uh, one Oblivion stuff, he's starting to gain his mana back, but he would like to have a full tank, because I'm imagining that Rock's Kiss will be trying to take fights slash push towers fairly soon. Yep. Uh, doesn't look too too interested right now, though, which surprises me a little uh -oh. bit. I, I would have thought they would go more for it. All oh, top. Shot up top. Uh, Veno does do the Poison Nova Gale combo. Clockwork going to be forced to port out, recognizing the Poison will tick him down, and it's still May. Veno going to port out as well. Quap trying to finish him off, but he is going to be able to port back to safety. Three dots on him, but he will survive in the well. So some damage exchanging going about, but uh, both of the... Uh, well, the Clockwork and the Veno both going to port out, and they will survive to tell the tale. I'm a little bit surprised the Rock's Kiss aren't pushing a bit more aggressively here. Maybe they're waiting for that first round of core items, perhaps waiting for uh, the Orchid to come out on Quap. I'm uh, a little bit surprised. The Force Staff coming out on Nature's Prophet as well, and it uh, looks like uh, Mech has now been picked up by uh, the Treant Protector, or at least he's pretty darn close to it. He's got the Dyer's Buckler, got the Mech Recipe, and I still think Pucna's going for a Force Staff. Really surprised to see double Force Staff rather than the double Necro Book. Makes sense against Clockwork, a great item, but... Um, I don't know, just a little bit different than the way I thought they were going to handle it here. They have the kind of lineup that I would say is a stereotypical Necrobook all-in phase roll lineup, but yeah. they, they've they chosen to go for something else. They're not going to brute force it right away, which it's right now the way the game is going, you can't really say it's not working out for them, but True. they might be delaying their, their strength a little bit, in my opinion, by picking up these four staffs first, but once they have the four staffs and the mech that you were calling out on Treant, which he's 700 gold away from right now, they can probably... Oh, it's not even... Oh, he has the recipe for the mech. He actually has the yeah, mech now. He has I it thought now, it was yeah. the mech recipe he was missing, but yeah, he, he already has it now. Yeah. Then... I, d I don't know whether or not uh, Flipside will be able to dish out the damage they need, and to dish out the damage... 
They have to fight in another ward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I will keep coming back to that because we will see it playing a big role. I'm sure of it. Hookshot, uh -oh. however, in on y'all. I'm sure Afterlife is going to regret this really quickly. Yeah, Living Armor comes out. My decision. Oh, the overgrowth. <laughs> Oh, Afterlife, he's definitely going to fall. Decrep comes, down he goes. Now, while that was happening, Luna did get picked in the bottom lane. Biz did drop the ulti, so it uh, looks like he was able to finish him off. But, yeah, that was absolutely a misplay from Clockwork. Very much so regretting his life, and that's the power of that. His life, his decision. Why did I say life? Regretting his decision. I regret my life. <laughs> I regret my extreme. life after that. A little extreme, but uh, Triant going to throw out that living armor, and, of course, Yold is going to stand his ground. And now this will make for a very easy Roche. Those Veno wards, man. Damn, are they tanky. And uh, Roche going to fall here at the 14 and a half minute yep. mark. Sadoi going to grab the Aegis. Big wins all over for Rock's Kiss. They're still holding on to their top tier one tower as well, by the way, courtesy of the uh, of the living armor. They might be able to keep it. They still have Glyph available. And actually, Lich is going to TP out. A little bit of chasing from the Weaver. And this is the frustrating thing for, uh, for Flipside is... They're gonna feel like we were so damn close to getting the tower. Guess what? Next time you're up here, it's probably full on health again because Goblack will keep living armoring this tower as you see he just started it there. And yeah, how much is it exactly that this heals per cast on level four? It heals 13 times 15. 13 that times is, 15, that's like 150 plus three more that's 15. That's 195 health yeah. every time on this tower. So, needs to cast it just a few times. We're talking like three minutes or so, then it's up to full health again, and I don't know whether Flipside oh, will actually no. get a second opportunity here. Weaver here. Quap gonna grab that uh, Orchid, and that's gonna be enough to finish off Weaver. He just picked it up. It hadn't been revealed. A had absolutely no idea, so he tried to man up in the mid lane. Quap actually almost fell, but that Orchid secured the kill. Very nicely done, and he was unable to time-lapse back to safety. It's great when you get those item pickups and you're kind of stealthy about it. You can set up basically a free kill like that, as I'm sure Weaver would have operated a bit differently had he known that the Orchid was out. Meanwhile, in the top lane here, the Tier 1 did fall. Those four stabs coming into handy. They're buying some time, and Yol is still going to fall, but uh, the scandal here on Pugna is going to survive for now. That Nether Blast doing a lot Look of damage. The, damage. the Lich coming down. Down goes the Crystal Maiden, but an Eclipse comes out. It is level 2, but still Luna not going to be tanky enough to stand her ground. Sadoi will grab that kill, and he will be able to stand his ground. So it is a three for two, and now they are going to be able to press forward, maybe chip away at this tier two, but they did also grab that tier one tower. So another great exchange for Rock's Kiss, though Weaver back in the mix. Biz is going to be forced to back up here. He does have the Orchid, actually has a level two ulti available as well. Not sure if he's confident in the amount of burst to try and turn this around with living armor, could possibly stand his ground, but doesn't have vision to the rest of the team and doesn't recognize, of course, uh, that Weaver is solo right now. Though Weaver's chasing him pretty deep. Nope, just going to turn would have gone up that hill, I think, BZC would have tried to take him there. He might actually try it still. Yeah. Backup is coming in from Goblack here. Now the Weaver just used Shikuchi, but now his team is there as well. This is going to be a bad move for Roxkis if they try it and they don't. Yeah, they will back out. Very very wise. Biz playing that uh, very safe, and I think that was the right call, even though he had a fair chance to burst down that Weaver. I think with the Orchid and a Scream of Pain, Sonic Wave, Dagger Rotation, I think that's enough to, to lock him down before the time lapse, maybe. But... Uh, it, w it would be close. This Weaver in particular only has a Bracer Power Treads, so not the tankiest force on the field. But, yeah, Biz will save it for another time. 11-4 to four here, that gold graph way in favor of Rock's Kiss. About 12,000, and experience graph pretty comparable there, about 7,500. So they do have a pretty solid lead, despite uh, not going for that all-out push we were talking about. Only three towers down here at the 17-minute mark, but they've been doing a great job getting the better of the farm about the map. Now that Triant has the mechanism, looks like he will be the first to grab a Necro Book with the Staff of Wizardry and Belt of Strength already in tow. And Pugna is going for an Axe after by the looks of it. I was expecting that, okay, they're going to get one item first, and then they're going to transition into getting Necro Books, but no. Uh, Pugna is going for an Aghanims by the looks of it, and the Prophet looks like he's going for an Orchid of his own. Yeah. So, I'm not sure if they're trying to... I, I still feel like Necrobook is an amazing choice here, but maybe they're like, we would like to win without massing Necrobooks because that's too lame or something. <laughs> but, well, I, mean, uh, I really think the lineup just fits it perfectly for yeah, Moss Necros. but they have so much pushing power, it's almost like they don't need it. We saw in that engage in the top, those four stabs helped get that reset. If they didn't have the four stabs, Scandal certainly would have died. Maybe you could argue if they didn't have the four stabs, they wouldn't have been in such an aggressive position, but uh, it almost seems like they don't need that additional bit of pushing power. This tier three falling very, very quickly. The Q's starting to add up from the Pugna, such a short cooldown, only six seconds. 
and they're doing this exactly right. The slow seas just let Pugna get that rotation going on, give him those arcane boots. That's the end of the bottom tier three. Glyph not going to be up for 25 seconds. That's at least four more nether blasts that Pugna can get off here before they engage. And there it is. Afterlife now going to hook shot in. He will catch Quamp, so she'll be able to blink away. Nether Ward is down. Oh, this is not looking good for the Radiant side. Lich will get off the Chain Frost. Going to take a few bounces, but not going to do too much. Going to be a four for nil to start things off. Clockwork buys back. The Weaver makes it back to the well. He'll actually get a, a positive four staff going his way as he does turn at the last second. But now Clockwork going to have a die back here. He throws out the cogs, but Quap just going to blink inside. And down he goes. Triple kill coming out for Sedoi on that Nature's Prophet. This will certainly be a dead bottom lane of Rax. And, uh, well, the other two tiers are uh, two tier. The other two tier two towers are up, so they won't <laughs> be able to rotate. Right there. Yeah, that's that's way too much. But uh, still, needless to say, very convincing for Rock's Kiss to follow that fight. They set that up perfectly. They did exactly what they needed oh, yes. to do. They put the Pugna Ward in a good position. They started pushing, and if there's one situation you don't want to be in in a game, it's where you have to initiate, but you really don't want to. And that was you could just see in the way Flipside were positioned and the way they moved into that fight. They were like. Okay, guys, we don't have a choice. We have to try. And when you go into a fight like that, you like lose it 95% of the time. Because mm -hmm. you're going to be in a bad spot, but you don't have a choice. Else the racks fall, and oh. Rock's Kiss will just go to the next lane and do the same thing. Weaver. Oh, no. Again, same story, different chapter. He tries to man up on the tree. Sedoi's right there. Didn't realize that Sedoi was able to finish up that Orchid. And again, they'll be able to drop it on him. He won't be able to time lapse back. That's now the second time this Weaver has been caught off guard by a surprise Orchid. And maybe surprise isn't the right word, but um, wow, that's just a free kill going the way of rocks right there. They're up to um, they're up to about a thousand gold per minute now. Advantage yeah. gained um, um, on flip side, which isn't too surprising considering the numbers. They've lost one tower and they've taken seven. Oh, hook shot up top on y'all. Nope, not gonna get the kill. Afterlife will be falling once again and. He's just too weak I, at this point. He's got nothing it's the, to his name. It's the concern that I had from the get-go in the draft that I was worried that Flipside simply wouldn't be able to fight this death ball. And it really doesn't look like it. They also lost the laning stage, which was where they had the better the better chance. But it's also hard to win the laning phase against Venno and Trian. So, very intelligent draft coming out from Rock's Kiss and can't really... Yeah. And you know, that's not a lane duo that I would normally think of. Like, oh yes, that scary Venomancer Treant lane. But uh, it really was scary. We'll see the Luna get dropped here as this fight starts. Orchid gonna come out on the Weaver. Oh, the four staff back. He'll still get overgrowth. Unfortunately, the Sonic Wave will whiff. But yeah, that's gonna be the GG well plays from Flipside. Very well timed as they will lose this mid lane of Rax. And I think Rax's case could just push for the win here if they really wanted to. But yeah, not a lane that I normally would coin very scary, but that double slow, even at level 2, the Gale with the Poison Sting, with the Leech Seed, and then the Living Armor on top of it, if you don't have an escape mechanism of your own, um, wow, I see why that Luna conceded that early death, because that is one hell of a lot of slow, my friend. Very much so, and... I, I I can't believe it. I how many games have we cast together now so far in these three last three days? Have we had a close game yet? One I yesterday. Don't that think was we have. Uh, the which match was it? Uh, our second to last yesterday. I want to say it was pretty close. The SSD was versus it? the retry. Oh yeah, that's right. You're right. We had one close game yesterday, which is kind of incredible considering how many games we've had. But these these games are obviously they're the teams are of a little bit of a different caliber. Flipside Russia still an up and coming team, whereas Rock's Kiss is generally regarded as one of the strongest teams in the West right now. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting a, a strong win from Rock's Kiss, but we've we've just had so many games, and even today where Virtus Pro against the retry, we were probably expecting maybe that one's going to be even, or maybe Virtus Pro is going to win it. But that was so so fast of a game as well. <laughs> uh, the majority of our games are less than 30 minutes, and I think I think it's kind of incredible to see how fast teams are getting wins right now yeah. in this tournament. Well, not to worry, Sindarin. Our next match coming up is going to be Na'Vi versus Maus. So this is going to be interesting for an array of reasons, and we'll talk about it once we get into the next match. I've, I've heard it's going to start pretty quickly here. So stay tuned, guys. Na'Vi versus Maus coming up next. Thank you for joining us here on Beyond the Summit. I am Zayori. With me again today is Sindarin, and we will be right back with more Dota 2 action here on Beyond the Summit. 